You are in a very deadly place. You live in a land full of all kinds of things that glitter, but they're not gold. You live in a land full of all kinds of promises that are lies. You live in a land that will do everything in its power to turn you away from Christ. But you live in a land that tells you you can have God and the world too. You live in a land that tells you you can love the world and love Christ. And I want you to know it is a lie. It is a lie. Do not think I'm trying to be angry. Do not think I'm trying to have a mean spirit. I am saying this to save you from the monster that has killed more people than any political tyrant that has ever ruled this land. In this planet, if you love the world, be afraid, because that could just be an evidence God has never worked in you. You have never believed unto salvation. You have never truly been converted, because if he truly saves you, he who began a good work in you will finish it. And why do we know that? This is a very important truth, because his reputation is on the line. Remember. God saves people to demonstrate how powerful he is. And so if he begins a work in you, he will finish it to demonstrate his power. Let me give you an illustration. When Israel was coming out of Egypt, they committed many sins against God and God tested Moses. He said this, Moses, get out of the way. I'm going to destroy this people and I will make a people out of you. And this is Moses intercession. He said this, no, Lord, if you destroy this people, then your enemies will say that although you were strong enough, powerful enough to bring them out of the land of Egypt, you were not powerful enough to bring them into the land you promised them. You see what Moses is doing? He's concerned about God's reputation. I'm concerned about God's reputation here today. I want you to know that if God has brought you, brought you from the condemnation of sin, if he has truly saved you, if he has truly justified you, then the evidence of that is he will continue working in you to transform you. Why? Because every Christian is a demonstration of God's power. He is going to finish the work he has begun because his reputation depends upon it. That's why Paul warned in the book of Romans. He said that the name of God was blasphemed among the Gentiles because of the Jews who identified themselves with God and yet did not live according to God's commands. In the same way, many nations of this world mock this nation that we are in at this moment, the United States of America. And one of the reasons why they mock it is because they say America claims to be a Christian nation and yet Almost every abomination that contaminates the world comes out of the United States. Every moral filth almost has its beginning here. So you see, the name of God is blasphemed among the nations because so many people in America believe themselves Christians when they live like devils. But that in itself is evidence that they have not come to know God. But you see, we're not talking, though, about a multitude of people. We're talking about you. Can you say? Can you prove that since the moment of your conversion? There is evidence that God is working in your life to make you holy. Can you see that? Can you tell me that you are truly a Christian? Because when you look at the world and it maybe deceives you and draws you to it, that God comes and disciplines you. That when you participate in sin, you can't stand it because the Holy Spirit is so convicting you. Or can you simply call yourself Christian and yet look like the world, act like the world, talk like the world, dress like the world, do everything the world does? In Christianity today, in evangelicalism, you hear a lot about the gate, but you hardly hear anything about the way. Now, what do I mean? First of all, what is the gate? The gate is Christ. The door is Christ. How do you enter into Christianity? Through Christ, through his person, his work on the cross, his resurrection from the dead, his ascension, and his current ministry as intercessor and king. How do you enter through the gate? By believing in 
Christ. Are we saved by anything else other than faith? Absolutely not. It is faith alone. Faith alone. Faith alone. Nothing else. It's not faith plus something else. It's not, I entered through the gate by faith and now I've got to keep going on this path and if I don't keep going on this path correctly, then I'm going to lose my salvation. That's not what Jesus is teaching. If I truly believe that Jesus is the only gate, if, if I really have come to believe that, it is not just an addition to my life. It's not just something I add to everything else. Oh, I do this, 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 I'm this, this, and this, and I add a little Jesus too. That's one of the dangers in any educational system that is Christian, is that we do a lot of stuff just like the world and then we just add a little Jesus. But what you have to see is this, is this is revolutionary. It is revolutionary. It changes a person completely and continues changing that person throughout the full course of their life. There are people in this room right now who if they die will be translated into heaven and they will bear upon themselves a glory unspeakable. And there are other people in this room right now who, if they die, will be sent by the judgment of God straight into hell, where the grace of God is totally removed and they will be revealed as the monsters that they truly are. You see, those of us who preach the gospel, we are not here to entertain you. We are not here to talk to you about temporal things, about how you can get the best that you can get out of this present life. No, I am not concerned tonight about your self-esteem. I am not concerned about whether or not your billfold and your checkbook balance themselves out. I'm concerned about one thing. One day, each and every one of you will stand naked before a holy God and you will be judged. Jesus said, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. What must you do? In Mark, he tells us, repent and believe the gospel. You say, Brother Paul, I got saved by praying and asking Jesus Christ into my heart. And I'm sure you did. But you weren't saved by a magic formula or some words you repeated after someone else. You were saved because you repented of your sins and you believed. And not only did you do that in the past, you continue to do it even until now. Because when Jesus... A proper translation of that verse he gave is this. The kingdom of God has come. The time is fulfilled. Now, spend the rest of your life repenting of your sins and believing in me. Conversion is not like a flu shot. Oh, I did that. I repented. I believed. The question is, my friend, are you continuing to repent of sin? Are you continuing to believe? Because he who began a good work in you will finish it. He will finish it. If you call yourself a Christian and there is very little desire, you, you don't get excited about the statement, do all for the glory of God. You don't desire becoming more and more like Christ and more and more useful to him. Your love for God's people doesn't grow. You need to be afraid. You need to be worried. If you can, and some of you can, live in secret, deadly sin, you need to be afraid because it's very possible that your profession of faith in Jesus Christ is false. It is false. False. Jesus said, enter through the narrow gate for the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction and there are many who enter through it. For the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life and there are few who find it. Beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Grapes are not gathered from thorn bushes nor figs from thistles, are they? So every good tree bears good fruit but every bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit nor can a bad tree produce good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then you will know them by their fruits. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. 
will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them may be compared to a wise man who builds his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house. And yet it did not fall, for it had been founded upon the rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell and the floods came and winds blew and slammed against the house. And it fell and great was its fall. Salvation is by faith alone, but salvation is the result of a supernatural work of God called regeneration, in which we become new creatures. We have living hearts, and we are going to live a different way. And the evidence that a person has truly become a Christian is that they begin to walk in that way, and they begin to be concerned about the will of the Father. What is God's will for my life? And they don't just say, what is God's will for my life with regard to a career? You see, one of the things about the Christian life, the moment you're converted, you know what you start doing? You start reading scripture. Why? Just so you can win a scripture memorization competition? No. The moment you become a Christian, you begin to read scripture because you want to know what the will of God is so that you can live according to that will. This Christianity is not a cultural thing. This Christianity is, is not something that just should be a small part of your life. It is not something that you do on Sunday. Christianity is not about you living in the world six days a week and coming to church. Christianity is not about you being just like the world all the time and then coming to church on Sunday. If that is your Christianity, you have no Christianity. You are not Christian. It is a dangerous thing to be raised in a Christian family. It is a dangerous thing to be raised in a Christian community because you may think that somehow because your parents are Christian, you are Christian. Or because you come from a group of people who have suffered that you too participate in that glory. That is not true. Young people, let me ask you a question. How do you know that you're Christian? How do you know that you have truly come to know Christ? I want to tell you something. We are going to go into Scripture and I want you to look at it as it really is. Stop comparing yourself with others who call themselves Christians, who compare themselves with others who call themselves Christians. Compare yourself to the Scripture. When someone, a young person, comes to a pastor or a youth minister and says, I'm not sure whether or not I'm saved, the youth minister will usually throw out a cliche. Well, was there ever a time in your life when you prayed and asked Jesus to come into your heart? Well, yes. Were you sincere? Well, I don't know, but I think so. Well, you need to tell Satan to stop bothering you. Did you write it in the back of your book, the back of the Bible, like the evangelist told you when you got saved to write down the date so that any time you doubted, you could point him to the Bible? What superstition has overcome our denomination? You know what the Bible tells Christians to do? Examine yourself. Test yourself in light of Scripture to see if you are in the faith. Test yourself to see if you're Christian. Do you realize if I dismissed us right now and told everyone to go knock on every door in this city, do you know what we would find out? 99% of the people, at least in this city, believe themselves to be believers. If you go back to your hometown and knock on every door, because I went back to my hometown after I got saved and knocked on every door, and you know what I found out? Everyone in my town is a Christian. 85% of them do not go to church, and those who do go to church are not concerned about holiness, they're not concerned about serving, they're not concerned about being separate from the world, they're not concerned about the gospel being preached among the nations. But bless God, they're saved. Why are they saved? Because some evangelist who should have spent less time preaching and more time studying his Bible told them they were saved. And he did it so that he could brag about how many people came forward in his next revival. I love you. And there are men here who love you. Listen to the word of God and begin to ask yourself some questions. Ask yourself this question. Do I know Christ? Is it manifested in any way? 
I mean, he's the biggest thing there is. There's nothing bigger. And if, if you say you know him, but it has no impact on your life, you, you don't know him. 